Hi, welcome to Parrot Literary Corner. I am Dustin Pickering, your noble host. Today we have Elliot Slynn, who is a performer. He takes listeners on a journey of the heart with his honest songwriting and poetry, with a unique style and an emphasis on the musicality of his lyrics. His storytelling and sonic signature weave together as one. Slynn's haunting and powerful voice carries an air of gentle melancholy which captivates audiences and leaves listeners spellbound. His work has been described as immediate and accessible. He aims to engage the soul and transform his personal tale into a shared experience. Slynn has performed at the Lulamon Leadership Conference for Lush Cosmetics, the Vancouver and New Westminster Arts Council. His first single, It's You, made it to Apple Music's Hot Tracks list and he's recently been appointed as the Poet Laureate for the City of New Westminster. Thanks for joining us today, Elliot. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> it was interesting sitting through that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes yeah. hearing stuff about yourself, it's kind of, yeah. it kind of has a different tone than, you know, like reading about it or something like that. It's, it's, totally. It can be kind of affirming, too, I think. You know, you feel like, you know, hey, I've really accomplished a lot there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one, that's one way to look at it for sure. So, uh, what do you what do you normally write your uh, your poetry and lyrics about, and and what inspires you the most? Um, I mean, I would say it's it's mostly about my life. Like, you know, I write a lot about uh, women, failed relationships, new relationships, mm -hmm. uh, life experiences. Like, I I really enjoy philosophy as well. So it's kind of like. Uh, and like almost like an existential practice in a way, like making sense of what's going on in my mind or how I'm feeling. So, and then words just come and I seem to write them down. So, interesting. So, uh, when did you begin songwriting, and and what prompted you to start writing music? And that's interesting. That you, did you start with poetry and then decide you wanted to do songs, or were you just sort of a natural songwriter? Um. I mean, growing up, um, I was around a lot of music. Uh, my dad would play like Bob Dylan and Leonard Cohen, Tracy Chapman, um, and all those artists. And there was something about uh, the the lyrics and the words that hooked me. Like I remember hearing um, this song on Bob Dylan's album, uh, Blood on the Tracks. It was uh, Lily Rosemary and the Jack of Hearts. It's like a 12 minute song, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a story. And I was just so engrossed in that and then um, you know, I would write in, in my notebooks and in journals and, uh, and then that kind of transitioned into poetry, but all of the, uh, you know, all of my inspirations, I would say were, were musicians. And so I think it's, you know, when I was about 30, I just decided to give it a shot. Like I was like, I'll just pick up a guitar and it just seemed to go hand in hand. That's interesting because I, I also was early on influenced by Cohen and Dylan as well. I, yeah. you know, I used to copy their lyrics down from, uh, I, I borrowed books from the library and copy their lyrics down into my um, notebooks and stuff. So it's interesting. We have something in common there, especially, I mean, obviously Bob Dylan is a, a go-to person, but a lot yeah. of people don't necessarily know Leonard Cohen as well. Uh, yeah. But he's, he's excellent. Oh my gosh. He's the best. He's, he's, yeah phenomenal as far as lyrics and overall effect of yeah. his uh if his music is very touching music and his poetry is excellent too totally Actually, yeah i mean mm -hmm. both, well both of them i think just have that ability to uh really you know put their emotion out there and i think like that's mm -hmm. such an important thing in art is like you can have all the form or you know um structure in the world but if it doesn't have emotion i kind of feel like it just lays flat on the page or the song doesn't move. And so um, both of those artists are really good at um, emitting that emotion. Right. So what do you think in your own music, what do you think captivates the audience in your own work? Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> that's hard to say. I mean, uh, it's, it's hard to, you know, I guess analyze yourself that way. Uh, um, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I just, I just try to do my best. Um, I don't think I'm the greatest singer. I don't think I'm the best guitar player. Um, but it's just something I like to do and something I feel 
I, I, I want to do. And so, um, you know, hopefully that emotion comes through uh, mm-hmm. in the music. So I, 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 I couldn't really say why, um, but, you know, I, I don't want to jinx anything. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, they say yeah. something and then the next thing you know, people are like, oh, there's a secret formula. It's, you know, yeah. they'll, they'll take it from you or you'll lose it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think it's just, I just, I just try my best and do the best I can with, with what I have, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's just that, yeah, that would probably be it. I don't know. So, I mean, you don't have stories of like, you know, people in your, uh, in your community selling you, like, I really love this particular song or this, mm-hmm. this spirit of this music that you've written here. You, mm-hmm. you have stories of people come to you and then tell you what, what specifically they like about your work. Um, I mean, from what I've heard from people, uh, it just like the, the like the lyrics are just kind of straightforward like there's mm-hmm. not a lot of uh there's not a lot of stuff it's just really direct mm-hmm. uh, but I couldn't I can't really take that as any sort of credit it's just because I'm I've like very limited talent you know so it's like I have to have to do it directly because I don't really know how to add all the bells and whistles um mm-hmm. so you know I yeah it's, it's hard to say I mean people have just said that they they have felt like I like I'm I'm there or like I you know I care about what I'm singing or what I'm saying and so they can feel that um you know but at the same time I know it's not everybody's cup of tea you know like I I, I you're not gonna find me I think at like a crowded bar um because it's very dependent on the lyrics and like people being able to hear it and so mm-hmm. you know it's hard to say like why some music resonates for some people and not other people. It's almost like trying to describe, you know, what, what's your favorite color and why, you know, like I love green, but I couldn't really tell you why it's just, right. it's just something inside. So I think that's, that's the thing with art um, and music. It's like, there just happened. Maybe there's just like a, a transmitter and a receiver and it just, you don't know which you are or why something um, speaks hmm. to you. That's an interesting analogy. I, I think I mean, I've always wondered, like, if I hear a song I really like, yeah. I always try to ask myself, like, what is it that I like? And sometimes it's just it resonates with you. You don't really you're right. You don't really know why. Why? It, yeah. You know, it just happens to strike you. It's like it appeals to your emotions and you cling to it. Totally. I mean, for me, the songwriters I've always liked were just really had strong lyrics. Like, I love Paul Simon, too. I mean, current day, there's a uh, Damien Gerardo is an artist that I like um, you know it's just there just seems to be something about like somebody and a and a guitar or somebody in a piano like very sparse very like pared down is what I is what I seem to like so is there a particular audience you aim to inspire or are you just you know are you just writing or you know just doing your thing and whoever takes it takes it or is there a particular group that you want to reach out to and kind of get their attention yeah um no I mean I just kind of just do my work and then kind of put it out there and see you know who picks it up it's uh I I wouldn't say that there's an audience I mean I do believe that um it's I think you know it's important to share I'm I'm a believer that everybody has the same emotions like the same emotional kind of tool belt Mm -hmm. and um you know, if I write a, a love poem, like somebody might find it when they're 15 or somebody might find it when they're 55. And that's the kind of thing about, you know, poetry and music and art. It's like, it's almost outside of time. Like, cause I've read poems from Rumi and it's like, how long ago was that? And they right. resonated with me. So I couldn't say that I'm, I write or perform to an audience, but you know, uh, I hope some people pick it up. It's just kind of like, you know, you almost kind of just step in the arena and see what happens, you know? Right. Do you, do you feel like, you know, you, you try to reach out to a lot of young, younger people and then inspire them? Um, I would hope so. I mean, like I've had teachers and, and people that have come before me that have inspired me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I wouldn't say that I, I, I think of that directly or like I'm thinking of that when I'm writing. Uh, but I think it's important to see people either that look like you or that are doing things that you want to do kind of, you can then envision yourself doing it as well. And so, 
you know, I think that's important. And if, if, if inspiring youth is like a byproduct, then I, I'd be happy with that too. Right. Definitely. I, I think that that's one thing that's very nice is when you hear somebody who's younger and is and inspiring, inspiring to do something and they say, well, you really pushed me in my direction. I went, or you helped me yeah. feel the, uh, you know, feel that I was going the right way. You know, totally. it's always a really wonderful feeling to, and I, you know, I've had people like when I grew up would say that I've inspired them and that always, that like always makes me feel nice. Mm-hmm, you know, totally. They, they kind of help them grow and develop as a person. Mm-hmm. So what, what, what was it like performing for the Lulu Le Mans, uh leadership conference and how did that gig come about? Um, so I was, it's a, yeah, Lululemon is the, it's like this apparel brand and I was working there and uh, every year, I guess they have a leadership conference and um, they knew that I wrote poetry and this guy emailed me and he's like, hey, have you heard of this other poet? His name's NQ. Um, and I misread the email and I thought he was asking me to perform. So I wrote back saying like, oh, um, I'd be happy to perform. And so it was a miscommunication, but then okay. he, said, he said, well, that'd be a great idea for you to kind of open for this guy. Cause I, you know, NQ is a, I guess an internationally known poet. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, so I, I was like, sure. And I, you know, it was, it was kind of one of those moments, like I've never really had a plan I just kind of do my work. And uh, it was just one of those moments where I was like, okay, wow. Like, I, it's almost like the universe gives you a wink and you just kind of <laughs> follow that, you know? So mm-hmm. uh, there was a lot of, it was the first time I've really performed for that many people. And um, it gave me the confidence to then try to, you know, pick up the guitar. So yeah, it just kind of came about by accident, but, you know, mm-hmm. just count my lucky stars, I guess. Right. That's interesting. It's sort of like a, you know, a little bit of a, a wink from fate to, you know, like yeah. in the right direction, you know, that totally. kind of thing. Yeah. So um, do you have a favorite song that you perform or do you just, you know, do, or for favorite piece that you like to take your perform and why would that be your favorite? Um, you know, yeah, it's usually the latest song is my favorite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I did put out that one single so far and um, that one I played a lot and people seem to resonate with it. So I was happy with that. So it was called It's You and um mm-hmm. I played that around quite a bit. Um, I have a new song called News, and it's kind of, again, like a a story song about, I I seem to write a lot of songs about uh, conversations, almost like uh, in a relationship, people talking back and forth to one another. It seems to be the way it is. And uh, so I would say that's my favorite right now, just because I feel like it's, I don't know, it's like more advanced in my ability to write songs than previous stuff um mm-hmm. but like I, the very first song i ever wrote was called hey charlie and it was inspired by a, a painting my dad did of charlie chaplin and so awesome. that one's really special to me it's not very complex it's just like four verses mm-hmm. but i would say that's special to me just because it was the first and uh it kind of i don't know i felt like i was writing something revolutionary you know but it was very simple so mm-hmm. yeah you know this. I, I couldn't say there's a favorite. There's some songs that my friends like more than others or other people like more, you know, so it's hard to say, but um, the latest is usually the greatest. Do you ever feel like, you know, when you're moving forward and, and progressing as a songwriter, do you look back at your older stuff and feel like, and eh, that's not not quite my mark, you know? It's like, it's kind of, gets kind of stale with you or anything. Do you feel like, do you ever feel that way? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know... I mean, like I've tried to, you know, study and improve and learn the technical side of songwriting, you know, like bridge, verse, chorus, which I will I'll admit, like, I find when I try to write in a structure, I have a harder time, but I've been trying mm-hmm. to do that. So obviously, um, older stuff uh, feels a bit uh, kind of just like pieced together, you know, with like masking tape, it's, it's not mm-hmm. great, but um they're still special uh but definitely in reflection you're like uh, it wasn't it wasn't my best but you know it 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 takes those songs to get to the newer songs and you know like you gotta you gotta write the bad line to get to the good line you Mm -hmm. know so um but yeah, it's trailblazing in a way just cutting down the old old wood and get to the new get finally get to the you know to the the meat of it yeah Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, that happens with, I think, in any artist, they feel like, you know, that a lot of their work is just preparation for the for the meat of it, you know? A hundred percent. And then, like, you know, uh, it, it, like you said, you just you just kind of, you you tear down the old stuff to build, you know, firewood for the new stuff. And I think, mm -hmm. like, art's living in a way, like, you know, there's poems and songs I've written where I've changed words and, you know, two years later uh because it just it seems like you find a better word or your, your mindset has changed so i never really think of these songs as like set in stone or even these mm -hmm. poems set in stone and, and they can evolve as as i grow as well so would you like to maybe read a couple of poems for us sure um this poem is called everything i've heard it said everything comes to pass some things are built to break while others are built to last. You touched my skin so softly like fog upon the grass. It was then that I knew everything comes to pass. Your eyes were bright as diamonds, your smile sharp as glass. I found your little letter. It said your love was on a fast. So I tied you to my poem and packed you in my past. The priest said on Sunday that everything comes to pass. It's definitely very direct and it's it's concise. I think it, you know, the images strike right, you know, right to the heart of the meaning. Very good. Thank you. For Thank you so much. Thank you. It's, it's a lovely, lovely poem. I especially love the fog, the image of the fog touching the grass. And then that in that that one really I felt that for some reason, I guess, because I'm really acquainted with fog to a degree. From my mm -hmm. childhood that was a big part of my childhood so you know that's interesting that you know you would bring fog into there into yeah. that that was really nice thank you for sharing that thank you very much you can read another one if you like sure um this is one of my first poems um uh, it's called arrows from the bow okay um okay your brown eyes pin me to the bed piercing passing through my flesh and the ribs that confine my heart. In your gaze, I am leveled like Hiroshima, crucified on the curves of your body. Lady of dreams, lioness of the jungle, matron of majesty, undress me with your eyes so your hands remain free. Beauty found in every crevice, a collarbone that taunts, lie naked with me in every stanza. What offerings can I bring to your temple? If you desire a king, dissect my past, form me. Shape a future for this shapeless thing. Coronate the pauper before the warfare is launched from the tip of your tongue, and I run with a heart full of shrapnel. Hmm. Uh, very interesting there's some there's some very interesting images there uh especially i think you know when you end with the you kind of begin with a little bit of the, the hiroshima and the war images and then you towards the end you you bring the shrapnel into it so it mm -hmm. kind of gives it an interesting there's a, a quality there's a very consistent set of images going on there so, uh, i really like that and I, I remember reading that poem you sent that one to us so that was really it's a really nice poem thanks for sharing oh, thank that you. thank hey, you I don't know if you if you would want to do an acapella performance, like a short little acapella eh, acapella performance for for us to just kind of get an idea of your voice as well. If you want to try oh, that for like a for a, for a song, yeah, I just want to just sure. do like a little singing for us and see what what your voice sounds like <laughs> a little bit. Okay, uh, um, you know, usually it is a guitar, but I'll try my best. Um, okay, okay, I, I, do a verse yeah. or two if you want. You don't want to do a whole song. You just yeah. do a couple of verses. Maybe. Uh, so this is, I guess I'll use it from the newest song, um, which is called News. So mm -hmm. uh, you say you love me, but you don't care. Honey, that's not fair. I tried to love you. Now I'm left with the blues. Baby, tell me, is this news? Um, what's in, I'm trying to think of the next verse and then the, uh, <laughs> uh, oh yeah. So our love has come to end. I wish you love again. 
Now we act like there's nothing left to lose. Baby, tell me, is this news? I, it's much better with the guitar. Right? Yeah, music always makes it brings out the quality of you know deepens the voice the quality. I think that that's good. That was nice to hear. You know, just get oh, an idea of what your voice sounds like when you're, you know, when you're in your in your performance mode. Yeah, you know, it's uh like I said, I I don't I'm not a great I don't think I'm a great singer. Uh, but it's more of like a I think of it more of like recital. You know, uh -huh. like I'm just I let the I let the I try to let the guitar take care of the, the music and then I I just recite okay yeah so you you, you just yeah that, that makes sense I think that's definitely a you know a lot of singer songwriters I mean especially you listen to Leonard Cohen and Bob Dylan I mean they're really oh, yeah. kind of masterful at, at putting their voice as a you know as as a um you know as reciting the the, the lyrics you know I mean, Bob Dylan is not really known as a you know brilliant brilliant singer in that sense totally. you know he's, yeah. he's got a good quality nuanced voice but he's not really known for like being operatic or anything you know like brilliant oh. you know <laughs> yeah. so, no, thank I'm... you thank you anyway and uh, i enjoyed it I, so what is your your uh work schedule when it comes to um the songwriting and the poetry what what kind of uh you know habits do you have uh yeah. to put together your your work um you know, I, I couldn't make any sort of claim to any sort of like schedule. It's that's uh, I tried that before, but for for some reason, um, it was I don't know, it was maybe like six or seven years ago. I said to myself, I said, you know, I'm just going to touch the guitar every day. Um, I, like before I would say, you know, I'll practice for an hour or I'll practice for 30 minutes and I would never do that. But I said to myself, I, I'll touch the guitar every day. And if it's five minutes or, you know, five hours, right? Like, as long as I'm interacting with it, I think, um, you, you know, baby steps. And so uh, I try to write every day. I try to play guitar every day. Um, but I, I couldn't say that there's any sort of uh, uh, like a schedule, really. Um, okay. But I just, you know, I, I can't remember who said it, but uh, it was this this writer, and she said she used to be out in the field, um, like you know, harvesting vegetables. And she said she could almost see poems coming in on the wind. And so she would run to her house and try to grab them, like a I tiger that story. Yeah. yeah. And so that's kind of how I feel. Like I have a notebook on me. I've got my phone on me. So I I just try to when when something comes, when when some sort of words come or some sort of lyrics come, I just kind of try to grab that thread and 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 write it in the moment mm -hmm. um and if i'm not feeling it then i you know i'm not but you know there's not really a schedule but uh just every day i try to do something every day yeah i think that it's definitely um it, you know as part of the life of an artist is you're relying a lot on inspiration if you're just not feeling it it's just not there's just nothing to it you know it just doesn't come out as, as yeah. powerful and as strong yeah so, totally you know, I, I I really think inspiration is important, and then I you know also sometimes you got to show up when you don't feel inspired, and then mm -hmm. and that might lead you to like I remember I just moved into right. a new new apartment, and uh, I was just sitting here. The place was bare. I picked up my guitar, and that's when I started writing the new song. Like I just I didn't plan to write anything. It just I was just mm -hmm. I, I almost just show like I showed up, and then the the muse was like, okay, I see you're ready. I'll come talk to you for. Yeah. <laughs> right that happens yeah. to me too it's like sometimes i'm just like hey, I'm, I'm a little bored maybe i'll just jot some stuff down and and i yeah. start writing and then suddenly before you know it i've got a small cat book together and you know yeah uh, of, a, of a poetry of a, i don't know love poems or something and it happens to me quite you know every once in a while i have that that big spurt do you ever yeah. have like a long spurt of uh of inspiration or do they come in short bursts or um, yeah, I mean, short bursts. I, I, I've really been trying to just almost like force myself, you know, um, I, I, to be honest, like it's, I feel a little sometimes uh, very vulnerable when I share my poems and whatnot. Like I post a lot of them on social media, um, but I always feel exposed because, you know, like you write it as well. So it's like sometimes you write and you have this emotion. Mm -hmm. And maybe if it's shared and it's, you know, kind of in the museum of your social media, um, 
you don't feel that way in a month and you're kind of like, oh, people can see I was feeling down or I was feeling heartbroken. And so, you know, but I've been trying to push through that because it's, I'm starting to think like, it's not about me or my emotions. Like if, if it can help somebody else, like it's worth my uncomfortable embarrassment. You know what I mean? Like it's right. It's worth that because that's our job as artists is to kind of be vulnerable. Yeah, be vulnerable and be the mouthpieces for other people. Anyway. Right. So um gonna be a mirror comes, to other souls. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it, it comes and goes and there's inspiration in 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 verse. Um, but uh you know, I just you know, it just feels more like uh it, it, you're on like a long hike rather than a sprint right yeah yeah so what sort of uh plans do you have as poet laureate um uh it's a good question um i do like i'm gonna be visiting some schools here in new westminster to talk to kids about poetry and literature and writing and um i think i mean this might sound kind of like you know unicorn rainbows everybody feels good but I, I honestly believe that everybody has the ability to write poetry um I just think a lot of people you know you grow up you hear about Shakespeare and you kind of think you have to find r- rhymes for orange or write a sonnet or you know and right. for me I, I just want to try to make uh poetry and self-expression more accessible for people mm-hmm. so I want to you know have spaces where people can come and write or we can talk about poetry, we can talk about art, um, things of that nature. I, in August, I'm probably going to just post up on different streets in the city and, and type poems for people on the spot, because um, I, like oh. I like to try my hand at that. Interesting. Uh, I don't know how people do that. I, I heard a story about a guy on subway in New York City who just sat there and he typed and, he, you know, just did poems that, by demand and people mm-hmm. actually paid him quite a bit of money for it and made a pretty good amount of money on doing that. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah I mean I think I think it just I think it just breaks down barriers for people it's like oh you can write a poem in two minutes you know it could be three lines and I think especially yeah. nowadays with um social media and people's having they don't have as much time it's like I love long poems but it, again it's like you can have all the form in the world and it's like but if it's three pages long and nobody's going to read it you got to maybe find a way to pare it down and make it so that it can be accessible for people <coughs> excuse me right yeah you definitely want to reach you know reach the i guess you could call the masses or the people out there that are maybe not as uh they may not seem as interested but maybe they need to have that spark hit them and then just go oh well i didn't know it could be like that i mean sometimes they yeah. teach you in schools you know like like you said the sun and it has to be shakespeare or something like yeah. that and it could be just very you know down to earth interesting you know it could be a few words a few lines three or four lines yeah. of a poem you know and yeah. it just has to speak you know it has to let it, you have to give it space to let it be a you know poem to be a, an individual poem you know totally so, yeah. yeah yeah so you know when did you decide you wanted to take writing seriously um I was I think I was like 23 um I had always been writing in journals like I said when I was a kid and I love music and um but it I never really thought it was something for me to do it was just something I love to do mm-hmm. and then uh an ex-girlfriend of mine took me to this cafe here in uh the city Vancouver uh called Cafe du Soleil and they have like open mic poetry slams and whatnot so we went there and I saw these poets from Toronto uh these four poets they're called the recipe they were a group Mm -hmm. and um I was like well you know they're doing what I'm writing they're they're doing what I'm doing but they're forming and I'm I'm just and I'm writing in notebooks and I don't know I just something spoke to me and I was like I really want to share um uh you know I know what music and poetry and art did for me when I was younger like you almost feel less alone or there's other people out there that feel like you and so I was like you know if I could do that for somebody else um I'd like to do that and you know and people also want to show off or talk to a girl so it's like you just kind of find Mm -hmm. you know whatever speaks to you that's always kind of been I guess my mode of operation is like I just whatever I'm interested in I just 
go for that and I don't really have any sort of rhyme or reason or or plan associated with it so interesting so I think we have a few minutes left if you want to uh give some thank yous or or maybe say like a few words of advice to fellow writers out there or fellow songwriters who would want to know what kind of uh, path to take or you know inspiring aspiring sure. writers um well I mean I want to say thank you to you for having me on like this has been awesome yeah. um uh, I've enjoyed chatting mm -hmm. uh, of, you know, for fellow writers or artists. I mean, the thing that I think about all the time is that like you, you never know how long, long enough is or like when something's going to click for you. And, and for me, that's the thing that draws me forward. It's like you may be one day away from your dream or one day away from a song or one day away from a poem that kind of, sets people on fire like speaks to them and so I, I always I'm like what if I was what if I walked away and I was a day away so for me it's right. just about um uh I would say like perseverance like just persevere um mm -hmm. uh, one thing I heard from Leonard Cohen is like success is survival and that always saying yes yeah so that I mean that would be my advice you know for what it's worth is just keep going because you never know mm -hmm what's around the corner so absolutely yeah well thank you for joining us today elliot it's, it's been exactly. wonderful and pleasant talking with you and we've i'm sure we've got a pretty good idea of your your art and your uh, and your voice as well and uh it's been very interesting to you know hear what you have to say about um poetry and and uh songwriting so thanks for joining us and thank you you're quite welcome. Uh, I'm Dustin Pickering. This has been the New York Parrot Literary Corner, and we never know where we'll be next time. We're looking for 1 million subscribers, so please hit that subscribe button right there on the YouTube. And if anybody would like to donate a little to us to help us move forward, uh, that's paypal.me slash nyparrot. That, that uh, link will be right there on the YouTube station. Uh, so please hit that and, and uh, get on there and give us a little your spare change we would definitely appreciate it and we appreciate every one of our viewers we thank you very much for your time and your energy and and consuming our and our, what we're doing and please feel free to share our content uh, with others and you know tell others about us share our flyers and share our videos so uh thank you again elliot and thanks to our viewers and this is dustin pickering and then i'm signing off at, from the new york parrot literary corner Everyone have a great day. Get out there and, and talk to people about the arts. Spread the word about all the wonderful things you could be doing in life and your dreams and maybe they come true. Thank you very much.